What an amazing two semi-finals we have seen. Italy won against Spain on penalties and England won against Denmark in extra time. In this video, we'll preview the upcoming final and we'll talk about what we've learned from both teams in their semi-final. Italy had a very tough match against Spain. Arguably, Spain was the better team on the day. And Italy showed a couple of signs of weaknesses. They really seemed to miss Pinazzola, which I expected because he's an immense part of this system of this team and without Spinazzola in the team Italy struggled to create chances. Emerson just doesn't offer the same and he hasn't got that ability and stamina to keep running up and down the pitch. Second weakness Italy showed in the game against Spain was their fitness levels and their squad depth. The Italian team seemed to tire out pretty quickly and didn't play with as much intensity as they have done before in this tournament. Now that could also be down to Spain being able to deal with the high pressure and the quick passing that the high pressure of Italy just wasn't custom to this game and that they couldn't play their way but it could also be down to fitness levels like especially from the 17th minute onwards you could see Italy was very tired a lot of players went down with cramps and you could see the Italians were lacking real squad depth because the substitutions made Italy worse there were also some positives obviously like defensively Italy was solid especially their centre-back pairing of Chiellini and Bonucci Italy also is very good at scoring the chances they do create they don't need a lot of chances to score a goal a key in that aspect is Chiesa who played a great game against Spain and who is always positive, always looking to run in behind defenders and always looking to have a shot on goal. Against Spain, Italy, however, had to rely a lot on counter-attacks. It, it's also how they scored their goal. But when they will be playing England in the final, counter-attacks aren't the most efficient. England has been very good at defending against counter-attacks, especially from the right side with Kyle Walker. Like, it's pretty much impossible to you know, beat him on the counter-attack. Another strength Italy does have is some players with big game experiences like Chiellini, Bonucci, Jorginho has played in a lot of finals as well. And what they do also have in comparison to England is a very solid goalkeeper. Pickford tends to make mistakes. He had a couple mistakes yesterday against Denmark. Donnarumma is very solid and doesn't seem to make a mistake. For their final against England, Italy will be hoping to score an early goal and to dominate the game right from the start. When Italy's fitness levels drop later on the game and you can notice their lack of squad depth, that's when they are in real danger of losing this game. Now England won against Denmark and overall they played a good game and they are the deserved winners. Denmark, however, defended really well in their own box. And those defensive tactics is something Italy can learn from. A lot of the chances England does create start with quick passing combinations and someone running down off the wings into the space in the box to deliver that final cross. A lot of the times this final cross seems to come from the left hand side, especially from Shaw who played an amazing game against Denmark. But it also happens from the right hand side and that's how England scored their goal. But England does tend to go through the left hand side a lot more. Against Denmark, England struggled to find that final cross, that final pass into the box to deliver that well. They only pretty much found that in two occasions and one of them they scored a goal with. A real strength of this English team in comparison to the Italian team is the fitness levels. Not a single player of England seemed to tire out yesterday. Pretty much no one went down with cramps and England's squad depth is insane. Their substitutions can always make a positive impact on the game and influence the game in a different way. Yesterday, for example, we saw England bring on Jack Grealish, who didn't play his best game of the tournament so far, but they also brought on Foden, who played well, Henderson as well, Trippier. I mean, quality quality players another real strength of england this whole tournament has been their game management and we saw that yesterday as well in extra time like the last five minutes of the game denmark pretty much didn't touch the ball and that is insane that is so well played a question for england however is how will they be able to deal with italy's high pressure we saw spain managed to deal with this very well with their quick passing combinations and with their similar high pressure on the Italian players as well. Now, quick passing combinations is something England is capable of, but Italians are always straight on it on the midfield and on the defense, and that's where you see it for England a lot less often. In the attacking front of England, they are very good with their quick passing and their beautiful combinations, but we've not really seen that yet in midfield. So that is where a big question comes in. 
are you gonna play Henderson instead of Rice or Phillips? Rice and Phillips both seem to struggle a little bit in the first half when Denmark applied high pressure onto them. Now Henderson is a player who can play really well under high pressure situations and who has that big game experience. He also is a real leader on the field. So even though Rice and Phillips have both been playing a very good tournament and have been very key to England, maybe in the final you have to play with Henderson just because of the Italian's playing style. Another strength of England is, you know, players with big game experiences, because Henderson isn't the only one. There are a lot of English players in this team who have played national finals or European finals, and that could be key in these games. Against Italy in the final, it's all about game management again for England. It's about not allowing Italy to score an early goal and to hold on and tire them out. But it's obviously important to still create chances yourself. Now, England has got the home advantage and in my opinion, they are the slight favorites. But it is a 50-50 matchup that can go either way and will be decided by who is better on the day. But if it goes to extra time, England are for sure the clear favorites then. Well, I hope you are as excited as me about the final and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe as well. And I'll see you guys soon for another video. Bye-bye.